China's leading exchanges continue making noise. More Bitcoin ATMs pop up, and Dogecoin takes a rocket to the playa. Today is Friday, August 22, 2014, and the price of Bitcoin is holding around $515. I'm Stephen Chun, and here's what's happening today in money and tech. At the same time as submitting their joint comments on the New York Bit License regulations, China's three major Bitcoin exchanges, BTC China, Huobi, and OKCoin, OK have already announced the release of their recent audit results with proof of 100% reserves. OKCoin OK kicked it off by sharing its details today, showing a whopping 104.86% of the Bitcoin reserves required to cover their customer balances. All three exchanges are also in the process of implementing a new cryptographic Merkle tree verification system, similar to those of Bitfinex and Kraken, which will allow users to see for themselves that their account balance was included in the audit date. As OKCoin OK CTO Chang Pen Zhao says, we have always sought to provide our customers with confidence in OKCoin's OK security and world-class technology architecture. And BTC China echoed saying, as an international platform, it is very important to us that all of our users, current and potential, have faith in our security and stability as an exchange. The cloud storage startup platform Storage has raised 910 bitcoins or about $461,802 in their recent crowd sale that ran from July 18th to August 18th. The funds will be put towards several company departments including marketing, advertising, community funding and legal counsel. Participants in the crowd sale will be awarded with early access to storage DriveShare and MetaDisk apps, which allows users to rent out their unused hard disk space and store their files on the collective distributed storage network. As the company says, the team at Storage is very pleased with the outcome of the crowd sale. It has beaten the best of our expectations and we want to send each one of you a big thank you for the support shown. Once DriveShare is ready for testing, a small network will test the application and provide feedback. Initially, only those who took part in the crowd sale will be part of the network until the app is opened up to the general public. Manhattan's first Bitcoin ATM went live on Christopher Street on Thursday evening. The ATM is constructed by Lamassu and installed at Vintage Store Flat 128 which already accepts Bitcoin as a method of payment. Currently, customers with Bitcoin wallets will only be allowed to deposit cash to purchase the currency. Though in the future, Lamassu says that it may permit the usage of Bitcoins to actually withdraw cash. The uncertainty regulatory situation in the city regarding the impending bit license has been the subject of controversy. Although Matt Russell of the ATM's operator PYC states that we are fully compliant with current laws and look forward to complying with the bit license when it becomes solidified. And in Australia, a new Bitcoin ATM recently launched in the country's capital, Canberra, at the Rugby Union Club on Agolfi Street, Turner. The machine manufactured by California-based Genesis Coin and operated by Bit2Bit also offers customers the opportunity to purchase and sell Litecoin and Dogecoin. As Bit2Bit co-founder Alex Hume says, the aim of our company is to move cryptocurrencies into the everyday retail world. Until recently, they have been mostly traded as an investment or seen as a curiosity. Bit2Bit team members will be on hand to assist users with a newly installed machine. New charges have been filed in the case against Ross Ulbrich, the suspected creator of online anonymous marketplace Silk Road. The new charges filed Thursday include charges of narcotics trafficking, distribution of narcotics by means of the internet, and conspiracy to traffic in fraudulent identification documents. This announcement follows recent news that Ulbrich had lost his bid to have his case dismissed back in July. When asked how this news will affect Ulbrich's defense, his attorney Joshua Drado replied, If that is true, and it's too early for us to draw a conclusion having just received it yesterday, these additional charges simply demonstrate the government's pension for converting a single alleged course of conduct into a set of multiple, similar, interchangeable charges in an effort to improve its chances of having a jury overwhelmed by the sheer number of charges agree with the government on at least one. In similar news, the request to drop one of the two counts against the Silk Road's Robert Faia were rejected by U.S. District Court Jed Rakoff on Tuesday, who dismissed the claim that charges for operating an unlicensed money transmitting business should be dismissed given that bitcoins are not legally defined as money. 
Instead, Rakoff stated that Bitcoin clearly qualifies as money or funds since Bitcoin can be easily purchased in exchange for ordinary currency, acts as a denominator of value, and is used to conduct financial transactions. Both Faye and fellow Silk Road operator Charlie Schrem are scheduled to be tried on September 22nd. We're coming up on Labor Day weekend, which can only mean one thing. Thousands of enthusiasts are packing up and heading to Black Rock City for this year's Burning Man Festival. And the cryptocurrency community will be right there with it. Officially registered as Camp Bitcoin, the brainchild Burning Man camp of Hives Wendell Davis and Satoshi Square founder Josh Rossi hit a few roadblocks when most of his organizers ended up not being able to attend. Well, all was not lost, as they would say, because in stepped Doge to save the day. Vancouver Dogecoin enthusiast Gary Lachance, Cameron Gray, Dan Gunn, and Kyle McDonald have taken over. And so, from forth the fatal loins of the now defunct Camp Bitcoin rises the exponentially more good timey and infinitely more subversive Camp Dogecoin. As their website declares, this camp will be a free forming collision of fervent futurists who take extreme delight in all things decentralized and or have the hots for unconventional hilarity. A meeting of the minds and the funny bones. Money and Tech will be taking a short break next week, bringing you one weekly news update later in the week. Then we hope you have a happy Labor Day and we'll see you again on Tuesday, September 2nd. In the meantime, find more information on today's news stories at moneyandtech.com. I'm Stephen Chun, and thanks for watching Money and Tech's Daily News Update.